with that, um, this what a weird day. I mean, we start off with one that you weren't accept, expecting, then we start one that was expected, but the artist forgot that she was going to be on live at noon. And uh, of course, this is her first time showing with us, so you can understand why she'd really, really want to make sure that she was on top of things. However, she off. is here. <laughs> and this is, this is Jackie. Jackie is both our neighbor. She has, um, down the street, she has her own business, one of the longest running tattoo shops in London. Yeah. Yeah, so Jackie is, um, yes? Addictive Tattoo. Addictive Tattoos which is now in our block, along with Grooves, the record store, Attic Books, the bookstore, and us, the ceramic stores. This is a really cool block to be in. But if you are COVIDly distancing, then, and in other parts of the world, be it Saudi Arabia, Maryland, Vancouver, wherever you are, we ship. Okay, now, we are going to talk about Jackie's dolls. So, Jackie, how long have you been making these guys? I was trying to think of that this morning. So I probably close to 15 years. 15 years? Yeah. So how did you get started making uh, doll? And were they, did they start off being ceramic? They're not ceramic. Okay, so I'm going to show her out. <laughs> this is going to be a very strong no, yes. Okay, so what, what's the hard it's, stuff? It's polymer clay. It's polymer, well, it's clay. It's clay. It's clay. Well, ceramic is a generic term. Okay. So clay is a generic term. So clay okay. is ceramic. Well, I have to bake it. So. Well, okay. So here we've got somebody who, for 15 years, has been using clay that she bakes, but it's not ceramic. Anyway, <laughs> so here we are with the polymer clay. But okay, so were they always um, um, macabre? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're a snorter. I didn't, I didn't mean to do that. And traditionally, I'm not. Um, were they always macabre? Yes. Um, they started out a little more humorous and animated, but have developed. Um, well, if this isn't humorous and animated, <laughs> I mean, my God. Okay, so tell it. What's her name? Her name is Ellie. Yeah, we know it's a her. <laughs> so this is Ellie. This is a little bit different from the elephant that we showed you a few minutes ago by Zhuja. But look at those eyelashes. Brian loaned them. <laughs> yeah. And there and there you've got these nice little tusks, you know, and uh, that point. So, okay, so how long does it take to make a little guy like this, a little woman like this? That little, little girl person? probably took me about... 10 hours? Yeah. Maybe. And so taking us from, so you make all the components. Yeah. And how long does it bake? Um, it's 15 minutes per quarter inch. And that I probably quarter would inch. have baked, yeah. You mean thickness? Thickness. Okay. It's not solid. There's an armature under that. Okay. Yeah. So what made you start doing dolls? Fate? I don't know. Someone bought me clay for a birthday gift and I started to play with it and I was making these funny little creatures that just made me laugh and yeah. just started to do some research and found out that I wasn't the only one doing it and um, it just evolved from there. Okay, so when did they go from, from cute to macabre? I, I don't know. I don't know. Not long after. I mean, even when I was making the, the first series that were more like claymation characters, yeah, um, there was always a little bit of a dark twist to them. And then, you know, there was some artists that really influenced me, and a lot of their work was um, more in the direction that mine went. So just as a matter of curiosity, what were your influences of um, your artists? Well, Sherry DeBeau was a big influence for me. Is um, that a doll maker? It is, yeah. in California. Yeah. We're friends. And I joined some online groups and started to show at other galleries in North America um, that would do predominantly doll shows. Right. Uh, and then I opened my own gallery called Dollerium in 2000. Oh, that was over on Wardcliffe. Yeah, 2011 I yeah. opened that gallery. And how did that do? That did exceptionally well. Yeah. We showed, I think, 42 countries and hundreds and hundreds of artists from all around the world. 
Wow. So yeah. we it was uh, we're fortunate to have. So here we've got a local international connection. How about that, guys? And um, okay, so tell us about the little guy over there. The Undertaker. So he's constructed um, very much like the elephant. So he's so hung like a horse. Yes. Yeah. Hung like an elephant. Hung like an elephant. <laughs> this elephant's not hung. Uh, no, she isn't. So I just I like this construction because it makes them a lot more animated. Yeah. Um, gives them more character, but he's the undertaker. So, have you ever done like? Uh, yes. Everybody I, knows what yes. I mean. <laughs> I, I did a set of Siamese twins that oh. were marionettes. Um, they were small though, like her size. Yeah. And their names were John, John. So J O N J O H N. Oh, okay. John, John. Yeah. So, does the. Um, did the undertaker work on this girl? She got three legs. Oh, no. Thought <laughs> 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 for a second there. Shh. What do you mean? Did, did, well, I yes, know when, yes, I, when I was looking at it, it I, th yes. I thought that she had three legs, and I no. thought, well, this is kind of different. Okay. I did do a three-legged one. It was the Siamese, it was um, Tweedledee and Tweedledum from Alice in Wonderland that were conjoined with oh, wow. three legs. Yeah. Okay, so do you also make the outfits? Yes. So, I mean... They're hand sewn, obviously. Yeah. Um, and a lot of the materials that I use are antique. Yeah. Or vintage materials. Um, it's, you can especially see it on another one that we'll yeah. show a little bit later. But okay. So the um, so when you're thinking up, like, do you start off knowing who it's going to be? Absolutely not. Almost a hundred percent of the time. So you just start. I may like, have sort of a vague idea of a direction I want to go, but many, many times they develop on their own and and just evolve. That's interesting an idea. because we also show Melissa LeBlanc. Melissa LeBlanc does characters, and she'll do the animal's head, and it's only when she sees the expression does the um, does it, she determine yeah. how it's going to be dressed. Yeah. You know. So. I, what part do you start with? I start with her skeleton, but when I start to sculpt, right, the eyes always go in first. Oh, okay. So I can see them. Yeah, and the eyes are glass. Uh, they're various materials. Some of them are hand sculpted. Some of them are glass. Some of them are acrylic. Some of them are stones. Like I don't always like, use the same materials. Oh, this person's only got one eye. Well, the other one's sort of dead. Yeah. Well, Jesus, and yet they're looking so alive. I mean, look at the teeth. Look at the look her 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 uh, scepter, or his scepter. No, I guess this is a her. Do you know what this reminds me of? There's um, a cartoon strip that I follow. Fast Track. Is it Fast Track? And there's the um, there's this is just absolutely awesome. So, this one you decided that she didn't need a body. No, she's actually sculpted, if you lift her up, she's sculpted on a brass bell. Oh! So she's our little dingling. She's With no dingling. dingling. <laughs> yeah, okay. And then, so you've gone from body to head. Do any of these, do these ever end up as tattoos? Yes. Oh my God! <laughs> yes, this is Alice. With a rabbit. A severed rabbit. A severed rabbit, of course. <laughs> this piece was called the Damn White Rabbit. I did, um, I did four pieces from Alice in Wonderland. So it was the Damn White Rabbit, um, I Hate You, which were the twins, and they were conjoined. Tweedledee was trying to saw off Tweedledum's arm, and Tweedledum was trying to choke Tweedledee. Oh, of course. Yeah. So that was called I Hate You. And then I did the Mad Hatter, which he was big like this one, and it said Gone Mad on his knuckles. Yes. And did I did the Queen of Hearts. Did you make the buttons as well? Yes. Did you see these buttons, Brian? Yes. Isn't that cool? So you get um, you get the Undertaker with three heads. <laughs> <laughs> and then well, this one I love with the little heart inside of it. Yeah. That is Daddy's girl. And she's got legs. And she's also got. Oh my God! Yeah, don't, don't. <laughs> okay, so this one might have more information than we needed. I was shocked you did that. <laughs> I, I was shocked 
myself. Um, he doesn't usually for anybody skirt. interested <laughs> in this piece, we will do a private video. Uh, that is, yeah. Ooh. Okay, so here we have, uh, now everybody, you realize everybody's, we're going to yes. get so many DMs. I want to see that. This is, uh, so what was the inspiration <laughs> behind, I, I don't know if I want to know what the inspiration behind this there was. There wasn't any. Oh. There really wasn't any. I mean, I made this doll and I wasn't in love with her when I sculpted her face. And then I found the little hatchet. <laughs> oh, and and then I found the her tights, which if you look at the butt on her tights, it says something. <laughs> I found... Okay, so this is... Uh, <laughs> this is... We're giving you more information than you need. This is going to be our first X-rated video. <laughs> okay. But that doll, that was all supposed to be a secret. A secret? Yes. You should have warned me. I didn't know you were going to flip her upside down. <laughs> hey, listen, you know, here we've got to give everybody okay, the so full that's, experience. The inspiration was the sock that I found to make her tights out of. It's a child's sock. I'm glad to hear that this wasn't really panties no. that were being sold for a doll. No, no, no. <laughs> so I made these tights out of her sock, and I thought it was funny that it said, I love dad. <laughs> and then when I found the hatchet, I was like... Okay, that explains her expression. Yeah. And then it just went from there. Okay, so... Um, okay. Her dress, though, is an antique handmade dress. Right. Um, which I love to use because of the detail in it. Like, this was all hand sewn by someone. And the, even the little embroidery on it was all hand yeah. sewn by someone. Years Stephen ago. King would probably really like this. Has he bought any of your dolls? No. No? Stephen King, if you're watching, I think we'll send you this. And, um, uh, oh my gosh, look at that hairdo. It's very COVID. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to just slip her over here. Whoops. Okay, there you go. And <clears throat> a little lighter. Okay, and a little lighter. Fuck, I just looked the face. <laughs> Maybe not a little lighter, but this is absolutely she brilliant. She has no story. She has no story? Not really. Her she should is, have. Her name is Matilda, and that's all we know about her. Well, I tell you, Matilda. She can't tell her story. She can't tell her story. <laughs> so you can see she can't tell. So did you make the little jumper? Yes, I made everything. Except the chair. I did not make the chair. It's a vintage, um, and it's tin can art. Oh, really? I, I so it's like outsider research. art. It's, yeah, Outsider it's, art. it's made from a tin can. Um, I don't want you to flip it because she may fall out, but there is... Uh, listen, that. I've already learned not to flip. <laughs> flip Jesus. There is... Um, so there's the, the tin the can. The seed is the lid of the tin can, and this, these were all... It was um, a folk art, I guess, kind of thing. Yes. So, okay, speaking of like folk art, what would you call your millinery skill, your dolls here? Like... Dolls are really big. I mean, people love dolls. And uh, these are certainly, I can just see this with Chatty Cathy. Well, this one could do, have Chatty Cathy as a friend because Chatty Cathy could keep on chatting without any. <laughs> and I love the bird. People, I hope you realize these little guys are birds. Like these are little wee I did not make the birds either. I okay, collected so this... them from somewhere years ago and I've just been hanging on to them. And when I did her hair, I was like, that looks like those little birds I have. And then it just evolved. So your dolls kind of evolved from, so were the birds added after the doll? Yes. So you're just sort of they looking were. at her and thinking, oh well, my God. I thought, oh, she probably fit in that little chair. And because she's constructed like this too, I knew she would sit. So I propped her in it and I did her hair. And then I was like, oh, those birds. Okay. So I added the birds. So what kind of inspiration, what made you think that, how did you pick a name for? Just popped The time head? of year, I guess, Matilda just came to me. So she's just... Okay, named. I gotta ask you, what time of the year? Like a witch. Oh, okay. Oh, Matilda. Matilda. And I like the name because it's unusual. So. Right. Well. And she is too. Yeah, and look at her shoes. Yeah, she stole these little shoe buttons from him. She did. Yeah, she did. Yeah. 
Oh yeah. my gosh, she really did. <laughs> you see, everything tells a story around here, and some stories are a little bit more macabre than others. <coughs> but <coughs> those are pretty cool. And now, the pièce de résistance, I guess. Okay. This is different. Um, this looks like it's straight out of a fantasy novel. Um, do you read fantasies? No. No? You should. Um, I mean, this looks like something that belongs on the cover of something. You know, I, I correspond with a guy, Jake, in Australia, who really is into um, fantasy novels, and I bet he could just immediately... Th Does this have a title? No, she just says a name. Ooh, shit, I thought that was going to be... Oh my god, that's actually her leg. It's her leg. I thought it was her tail. No, it's her leg, with a hoof. With a hoof. One hoof. One hoof. So I can see why she's in a carriage. <laughs> um, uh, I don't know what to say about this. This is outside my ken. you got to walk me through. What inspired you? The carriage. Of course, every baby um, carriage has something like this in it. <laughs> and an artist called Ray Caesar. Okay. Who, um, he did... Um, he does digital art, um, and he did a piece with uh, baby sailor in a carriage, in a pram. So I found this pram and immediately wanted to do something to put in it. Um, but so many things inspired me about this particular doll. The horn I used. Right. The fur. Is the, for, is the horn polymer or is that a real horn? No, that's a real horn. Okay. That's a real horn. Yeah. These aren't real ears, are they? No. No, thank God. But it is real fur. And yeah, but you were saying your grandfather. It's from my father's mink, my grandfather's mink ranch. Yeah, so this is said, uh, you know, don't get too excited, Peta. This is a long dead mink. <laughs> yeah. And um, the carrot. That's uh, from your, this is pretty fascinating. So, I mean, there's, there's, there's so much to look at and there's so much to say, and yet I'm rendered speechless. <laughs> this is, there, like how long would it take to do something? That piece was probably 40 or 50 hours. So when you're talking about 40 or 50 but, hours, over a yeah, time over frame, time. because I think that if you spent a week, a work week, doing this, you'd be a little bit... Well, no, and you, I couldn't, because sort of each step evolves into the next step, or something outside of her will inspire me to go back to her. Right. So... She may have been three or four months in the making. So, I mean, these obviously, regardless of the time frame, they, the actual length of time, rather the time span, is quite long. How many dolls do you think you've um, done? Hundreds. Hundreds? Yeah. Hundreds, I would say. Oh my because God. we had a show every six weeks at the gallery, every four to six weeks at the gallery, and I did new pieces for each show. Yeah. Um, the gallery was oh. open for 18 months, but I was sculpting for years before that. I mean, there goes through periods in my life where I may not sculpt much. So when I moved to the tattoo shop, um, when my partner passed away, you know, there's time frames in that period where I may not have sculpted for a couple of years. This I do because I love it, not right. because I need to make a living. Right. You know, I do lots of other things. That does not mean they're so. inexpensive, folks. But uh, you know, the they're whole special thing, because yeah. they don't get done all the time. The whole thing, though, um, like you were saying that you were, when you had your gallery, you were hosting doll artists from around the world. Around the world. Was the bulk of those artists was was there was it pretty well all the macabre or was there also pretty dolls? I would say there was there was some beautiful dolls and I mean these are lots beautiful. of different just, mediums too. Yeah. 
Um, but I would say that probably 80% of them had some undertone of the macabre. Yeah. So, you, they, I didn't, I mean, hundreds of, that's a lot of, that's There's a lot of dolls. There's been a lot of dolls over so, the years. And because you were showing people from all over the world, your dolls must be all over the world. I do have them all over the world. Yeah. yeah. So, are there people that specifically collect your dolls or are there people that just collect dolls in general and and like this yeah i would say that most of the collectors that have my pieces are um collectors of lots of other artists in the same genre i mean these are, they really are uh incredible so taking us through a head so the as you're sculpting the features do you have anyone in particular in mind, or is it, again, strictly coming out of your imagination? It's strictly out of my imagination. Even if someone commissions me to do a doll for them, right? I may take like an eye color or a hair color that's similar to what, who they want this doll to be, right? but it's always from my imagination. I'm just like, I really, I, dolls are, are fascinating. I remember years ago making a delivery to somebody who collected dolls and walking into their foyer and there were at least 200 dolls looking at me, which is unnerving. Yeah. Because there are dolls and there are dolls. I mean, these look as if they could come straight out of a fantasy novel. I mean, they've got so much personality and they are so... Um, it's weird that you can look at something like this and say, well, that's so lifelike, uh, but they are. Um, they're extraordinary. I think it's, um, I mean, this obviously, we've had, we've had the odd doll in here. Um, they usually buy. But, you know, the, uh, the thing is, is that these are, I am really, really going to be very curious to see to whom we sell these. Like if it'll be new clients or if all of a sudden somebody who's just got, is really open to new ways of looking at art. Because, I mean, these are art. This is like, this is absolutely phenomenal. I mean, she's got her nose-picking finger ready. <laughs> they're, they're just, they're incredible. Um, they're so, a lot, I might have nightmares tonight. Expressive, people Expressive, say. yeah, they are. They're really, really expressive. They're, they're incredible. And... Um, I find that we, and we're so privileged to be able to, to showcase them. And uh, particularly, I mean, October is the perfect time to showcase them. So anyway, you are, you have just been introduced to, um, to Jackie. And um, Jackie is, um, as I said, our neighbor down the street. And um, in a wonder, I think we're on the best block in London. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I every, agree. Everything is, uh, and uh, so we now have these little guys, and this is one of the first interviews that Brian has been silent. What do you think, <laughs> Brian? <laughs> it's good. Yeah, good see He's uh, speechless. He's speechless. Yeah, yeah. which is um, not, doesn't happen very often. So anyway, here we are, and these are with us, and they will be going off to whomever, and uh, Jackie, It'll, thank you so much. What? It opens on Thursday. And it opens on Thursday. But again, remember that these are different times. If you are looking for your own personal little uh, close-up video of these guys, um, just uh, DM, email, or whatever, and we will send you, send you that. And um, they will be up online shortly. And... Jackie, thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay.